in some ways there are a lot of similarities just in terms of I think um, preliminarily how they've gotten along and worked well um, with one another uh, just there's a lot of synergy that way it's, it's early you know the Bahamas trip really helped with that last year and so we won't have the benefit of doing that and getting those 10 full practices in those couple games but this group has shown signs of of uh, real commitment to and it's natural it's not a forced thing just a real commitment to and a tentative attentiveness towards one another Jamari, uh, big important role to fill with Talon leaving. What does Jamari bring that might make this team look a little different than it did last year on the offensive side? Yeah, well, I mean, I'll say one thing. Defensively, he's got a knack. I mean, we keep talking about it, but he's just got a knack. He's really good at anticipating where the ball's going and getting into passing lanes. Um, but uh, he's explosive as he can as he gets downhill. Um, he's really been cognizant of trying to to figure out how that works for him and not step on any toes, but you know it's time for him to start stepping on the gas pedal a little bit for us and 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 getting into that role. But uh, but uh, he he can create some stuff downhill. He can make plays. Um, he probably that's probably a, a real strength of his compared to even some of the guys last year is the ability to create some stuff downhill. So we need him to try to do that, and he's been good at it. Well, uh, Lamont Nick could have finished his career anywhere. He yeah. wanted, chose to come here. What does that add to you guys? Well, I mean, a lot of different things for us. Maturity. He's an incredible talker and communicator. I mean, I'm, I, I find myself constantly um, just saying something to him about how he's communicating with his teammates. He's unselfish. Um, he knows how to play at one speed, which 99% of the time is a good thing. <laughs> Um, we still will work on that 1%, but uh, he's going to find himself going really hard, and that's going to serve him well. He's long and athletic also. He's been around this league. He's really experienced. He's been in a lot of places. Um, it's a great addition for us, and he's, uh, he's just been, he's been a real great energy boost for this new group. You seem to be really harping on all the details during practice. How do you feel like the guys are kind of taking what you're trying to teach them in the moment? Yeah, really good. I mean, some of this stuff is new for guys that haven't been in our program. We're, we're detail-oriented. I think it's what has helped us uh, achieve some of the things that we have. And, and, you know, even some of the guys that were here last year, but, but we're red-shirting. You know, for those guys, you find yourself worried more about what the other team's doing when you're on the scout team than what, what we're talking about. So this is the first time for them, too. So just the concept of... of the difference between winning and losing in so many games this year will come down to something that was really controllable and had really more to do with concentration than anything and um, just getting guys to start to realize that at an early point. Jordan, Jordan Butler kind of maybe got lost in the shuffle there at Missouri last year, but just watching him out here uh, when he's knocking down the outside shots at that size, what can that, what can he bring to the team? Well, uh, there are a lot of guys that can thrive in what we do offensively. One of them is a guy who's built like him that can that can operate and you know handle the ball from the perimeter and shoot from the perimeter. I think we saw uh, what we were able to bring with B.J. Mack even last year, and and um, you know B.J. wasn't blessed with the with the height and length that Jordan is. So um, there's some real things that that this offense could really do to to highlight who he is as a player. Um, um, some real decisions that have to be made if he can get to where he can make shots from a on a consistent basis from the from the three point line. You had Talon, BJ, Michi as kind of your leaders last year. Who have you seen kind of take over the leadership reins? Yeah, you know, it's hard. It's early. We we I don't really say these are our leaders. You know, I think those guys will emerge. Um, Typically, it's older guys. It happens to be guys that have had a lot of experience that are really comfortable, that have been around the block and learned a thing or two and sh don't mind sharing that with their teammates. That's what it was last year for us. Um, you know, oftentimes it ends up being guys that are out there on the court a lot too. It doesn't have to, but it just works out that way. And and so we'll, we'll over the next months, that'll, that'll happen on its own organically. And, um, you know, we encourage and sometimes we put guys in situations where just to see is a guy going to say something, is a guy going to emerge in this particular scenario, and, and then that kind of just does it on its own. You're Along pretty... those same lines, when 
you need a big bucket when you need when there's a critical moment in a game. Talon, BJ, Michi kind of filled that role last year. Do you, do you have a sense of, of who may be kind of a go-to guy in a, a clutch moment, or does that evolve as well? That, I think I think it'll evolve. I mean, I think you can look at some guys like you know, Colin Murray Boyles. That wasn't his role last year with that group. Can he evolve into that role? Um, you know, for Nick, in terms of generation of offense, that wasn't really his role um, at Alabama. Can he emerge into a guy that uh, just feels comfortable touching the ball and generating some offense through that? Uh, it's really hard to say with young guys like Cam Scott. There's a lot of guys, honestly. There are a lot of guys. And we had some guys last year, you know, Jacoby hit a game winner at Missouri. We, we, you know, we had a bunch of guys that stepped up and made plays when they were called upon. Miles Studi's been around. Is, is this a real breakout year for him that way in terms of doing some of that stuff uh, on his own? So I think the beauty of it is we have a lot of guys who – who have real potential to, to, to uh, take over in some of those situations. How would you say Cam Scott has handled being the hometown kind of superstar kid, staying home, and the expectations of him being so high? How has he kind of handled that transition? Yeah, I think he's done a great job with it. It's difficult. You know, there's so much in terms of expectations and um, the way it all played out. But uh, he's done a really good job so far. He's been tremendous with his teammates. I mean, it's been fantastic in terms of blending in with them. He's an incredible listener. Of all the things, the first thing that stands out when I think about Cam, basketball or otherwise, um, aside from just his overall general character, is he's an incredible listener. He's very intentional about paying attention to what you say and how that can help him become a better basketball player.